Experiencing the unique cultures in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Rome, Italy, and Beijing, China, among others, within a few hours would require a space age transporter, unless you attend the third grade in the Southwestern Elementary School. The government of China uh, has uh, the big flag, and when the big star means, it means the government and the capital city is Beijing. Nine years ago, the teacher for English language learners capitalized on the influx of foreign students and their families by including their countries and cultures in her curriculum. She established the Multicultural Fair as a way for all families to share and celebrate their heritage. Well, there are a lot of core countries that they do year after year, but it also revolves around who we have in third grade. So if we have somebody, let's say, from Pakistan, and we know that uh, they, they and their family have something to share, then we try and include Pakistan. Their currency is the rupee. The rupee? Okay. And, and field hockey is their most is their national sport. Okay. And cricket is their pop, most popular sport. One unexpected benefit was that the students, who are often quiet and reserved, became more outgoing and social. The Mona Lisa was painted by a famous artist who was actually Italian, but he, the, the Mona Lisa is in France. Parents and students from other grades have a chance to mingle as they stroll among the exhibits. Preparing the exhibits involves parents directly in their child's learning and instills pride in their accomplishments. We do the explanatory paragraph at school, so that's where they learn all of the information about the country. And then they pick a specific item that they want to research further at home, whether it's you know the Great Wall of China or a food item from that country or clothing from that country, and then they research with their families and put together an additional project. Preparing for the multicultural fair is much easier than arranging flights around the world, and participants can experience and learn about their global neighbors right here in their own community. We took a look at our historical data and we saw that registration for online courses has really picked up steam and if you compare it to national figures for online training, it's very much in tune with that. And so essentially NISBA is very much aware of this and wants to offer a very superb product for our membership that really helps prepare them for their board service. If you take a look at e-learning, it's just exploded within the past few years and there's so much more technology out there. And essentially what we're doing right now is we're redeveloping those online courses, both the fiscal oversight and the governance. And we're really raising the bar for what online training is all about. And we're taking advantage of that new technology where these courses are going to be more submersive. They're going to be more interactive. A lot of our members do find benefit in attending the in-person training. However, we got to be realistic. It doesn't fit everybody's lifestyle. This new e-learning platform is going to be highly beneficial. Not only do we have 24-7 rolling and open registration, but we now have a course that it, you can not only take it on your desktop, but it can be taken on your mobile devices, whether it be your tablet or your smartphone. So essentially, it allows our membership to take the courses at their own pace, really on their own time. So we're really talking about a very intuitive system, really raising the bar and offering a, a, an online learning course that fits the busy lifestyle of our new membership. But not only that, but it's gonna really help prepare them with the knowledge and skills that are really necessary to help them a, a, through their career as a school board member. The system is going to be very easy to use, not only for them to register, but also for them to navigate through the courses and complete their mandated training in a timely fashion. We are family, family, a very special kind of people. Family. Three times a month, former students, 
parents and even grandparents return to the Newark School District for a special event. Farewell Friday is more about than just one assembly, one event. It's really the, the culmination of all those assemblies for the whole year when we come together and really build our school community. It's a tight-knit community where everyone roots for the young people and wants to honor their achievements. I think it's of a prime importance to the community. Uh, to me, as a grandparent, I get to see what the kids are doing nowadays. I went to school here myself. Uh, I was an educator for 37 years, and so I look at things maybe a little differently than some others. But I was immediately instilled with the pride that the faculty has here, the staff, the principal, and the kids. A lot of these kids started out stage shy in the beginning, and they were dancing up there today, so it's a good feeling. Respect notes are an important part of the event. Students nominated by individuals outside the school receive recognition for good deeds that go above and beyond for helping others out. And just the number of respect notes that we have, because people want to get them in before the end of the year, tells us as a school about how you are dedicated, committed to service to others. Members of the Newark School Board support the tradition, which has been taking place at the Lincoln School for more than 30 years. A good staff in a, in a district and a, supported by the school board can accomplish, in a, even in a, a small district like Newark. Puts into per, perspective um, what, what we really are supposed to be doing. Um, it's not about tax caps, it's not about, it's about the kids. According to Lincoln School Principal Jeffrey Hamelink. It's just a great honor to be a part of that, that privilege of being just a moment in time um, and a piece of what Farewell Friday is. It's, it's just... It's a great place to be, and I'm very lucky. I'm Casey Nicholson for NISBA News.